bed. Love. Bed. Bed. Love. <laughs> beyond. Bed. Love. Beyond. Bed. Love. Beyond. <laughs> Welcome to Bed Love Beyond, the podcast for the hopeful and the hater in us to discuss sex, love, relationship, and whatever's clever with like-minded people like you who are also in limbo with love like us. I am Jennifer, and I'm here with Ms. April Speaks. Hey, guys. And we have a guest today. We are joined by Ms. Georgia Woodbine. She is the author of How to Attract the Right Man into Your Life, as well as some other goodies, and she is a life coach and public speaker. What's going on, Georgia? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Welcome to our little podcast. Well, thank you guys for having me. So we uh, got some information here that you wrote this book about how to attract the right man into your life. And since we are the relationship podcast, uh, that is always one of the questions. And me and April are currently in relationships, but, you know, it's always good to double check to make sure you're with the right person. (laughs) (laughs) Do a little check and balance, make sure things are still good. Especially those days when they get on your nerves. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I hear you. It's it's a very juicy topic. Uh, Yes. And I think that growing up dating, well, growing up dating, but dating in general, like that is like really one of the hardest things. And, you know, we see a lot of our friends and stuff in relationships, you know, like that dude is horrible. Like, why don't you know that? Mm -hmm. So. Why don't you know that? (laughs) <laughs> we, have, we have a little we have a little person with us today so uh hi little person <laughs> this is all well, this is know, all part of motherhood sometimes know, the children come with you <laughs> exactly exactly i hear you i hear you um you know the how to attract the right man into your life uh let's not forget the subtitle which is entitled no more settling um, oh yes yes i did see that and i forgot to write that in Yes, no more settling because I think uh, a lot of times, not just women, but men too, they tend to settle in relationships that Mm -hmm. they think they should, you know, just tolerate and be in just to be with someone. And I don't think that that's the right way to go, especially if you're looking for a life partner or you're looking for someone that you can spend the rest of your life with. And and what happens is a lot of people in relationships, they hook up, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, people always say, oh, he's not my type or she's not my type. What, what is type? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what is type? What does that have to do with character or how somebody treats you or how somebody makes you feel? I think people need to get rid of that word type. Yeah. Sometimes people would ask me, like, what is your type? And I was like, I don't know if I had a type. But then back in the day, I'd be like, all the guys I dated have issues with their dad. Or, like, I would, like, go down, like, they were artistic. They were this. I'm like, maybe I do have a type. But um, I don't know that I actually do. But uh, sometimes it seems like, too, a type is just something people become comfortable with, like a little right. safe zone. And then right. once you decide you're not going to leave out of it, then you keep meeting all the right wrong people. Right. Exactly. It becomes like a pattern where you're, 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 you're constantly attracting the person that you was with, that you broke up with. And... Yeah. You know, I always say, like, one of the things that I, I, the reason I wrote this book, hello? Yeah, we're here, sorry. Uh, Well, the reason I decided to write this book is because I was that woman that was single for a very long time, and I waited, you know what I mean? Like, I dated because it was important to me, because I had my son at a very young age, but I think that it's important for women to, to get that dating out of their system so that they can meet different types of people and see what they like and see what they don't like. I say the most important thing in a relationship is to find out the things that you don't want in the person so that when you meet somebody, you don't repeat those same old, old patterns right, like, that you did in your past relationship. Like checking and, for red flags and stuff of that nature. Yeah, absolutely. I think that... You know, one of the things that people need to to really look at is one of the chapters I talk about in my book is like paying attention to the red flags because there are always red flags right. when you date. There are red flags when you're talking to somebody on the phone. There are red, red flags when you go out on a date. Like, they are there, but I think people choose to ignore them. Yeah, we just did a podcast, I think it was like two weeks ago, or maybe, right, two, three yeah. weeks ago about red flags. Right. Because I think a lot of times people do sit back and say, you know, oh, well, he did that. That's a little weird, but, 
uh, he's really cute, uh, and I'll just see how it goes. You know, and then, like, months later down the road, they're like, oh, my God, I should have known, you know, when he did this, this, and that, that he wasn't that type of person or whatever, or he was this type of person. Mm-hmm. Like, if he's rude to the waitress on your first date, he's probably an asshole. So, you know, you might want to think about that before going on a second date. Right, right. And, you know, like, a lot of times when, when women, um, not just women, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I don't try to kind of make it geared towards women because I think men, too, you know, sometimes they're looking for the right person, but they also go through the same thing that we go through as women. So I don't try to generalize, even though the book is targeted to women, but a lot of the principles and things that I talk about, it could be applied to both sexes. Like, one of the other things I talk about is live the cookie jar. You know, I think a lot of times, and I'm going to be careful what I say because I know there's a little one around. (laughs) 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 But, um, um, you know, I think that people need to um, wait instead of getting intimate with someone sooner than later because what happens is when you do you become clouded emotionally and you cannot make better judgment calls when it comes to deciding is this somebody i want to continue to see so that's why i say you know people say is it 30 days is it 60 days 90 days i'm not trying to put a timeline on it like steve Hartman, but i'm basically saying that wait until you know the time is right get to know the person a little bit better before you start exposing yourself to this person yeah, I do think a lot of times people kind of just jump into it and then, you know, they're like, oh, they feel all these emotions that aren't necessarily based on like, like they're more like of a lust type thing. And then they're just like, oh, I'll excuse all this other stuff. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I think that a lot of times when, you know, you'll hear people say, oh, you know, I'm not in a relationship, but, you know, I got to get my groove on or I got to, you know what I'm saying? I have needs or whatever. You know right, what I mean? right. But then people don't realize that every time you hook up with someone that you are pulling energy from this person and it could be negative energy. And you could wake up one morning and be like, I am so depressed and you don't even know why, because you just... You was just intimate with somebody that gave you their energy. So that's why I talk about why people have to be more cautious with not only who you're spending your time with, but who you're intimate with, because you don't know what kind of energy this person is giving to you. Right. I do agree with that. Um, I was reading, I guess, that uh, you, well, I was reading somewhere that you did say that men can benefit from reading the book. Do you think that a lot of men do read the book? I know because of the title, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Unless unless they're looking for a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true, that's true. But you know, like some some men are like counter pr- or say, productive. You know, when men see that, they're like, I mean, because when I, I, you know, when I did my book launch, I invited, I did a book launch. When I, when I launched this book, I invited men and women because I wanted to, it was like an open discussion on what men want and what women want. And right. I think that like, it's so important to hear both sides because there's always two sides to every story. I think men think they know what, what women want. And then they're like, Oh, maybe not. Like, they're like, <laughs> I didn't even ask for any of that. <laughs> well, you know what? That's why we have to coach them. Ladies, we have to be the coaches and we have to let them know what we want. And we have to set the tone early in the relationship. I think that a man will treat you how you allow him to treat you. And if you go in with a standard on how you want to be treated with respect, um, and how you want him to treat you, he will treat you that way. But if he knows he can get away with treating you like mediocrely or do anything that right, he wants that. or get away with things or disrespect you or you should not allow that, not even for a minute, you know what I mean? So you have to set the tone in your relationship and tell the person, look, this is what I'm looking for. You know, I won't tolerate this and don't yeah, stick around. Yeah. You know, women that are, and I don't want to gear the topic, but women that are, like, in abusive relationships, and it doesn't have to be physically. It could be uh, verbally or emotionally, or this person could be making you feel less about yourself. And these are things that you have to pay attention to because if you're spending time with someone and you're feeling like you feel worse than you did before you hooked up with this person, then that's not somebody you want to be with because you want to be with someone that's going to help to elevate you, that's going to help you to grow, that you guys can grow together. The little one just got into Cardi B, my bad. Um, why, why would you, why do you think women stay in bad relationships, like with the person who's like not the right person? 
Like after they've already like hook, line, and sinkered them in. And why do you think they stay? I think a lot of people are afraid to be alone. And you know what? Being alone is not the worst thing because when you're alone and when you take time in between, meaning like, you know, some people just jump from relationship to relationship to relationship. They never get themselves time to kind of reflect on, okay, why didn't that relationship work out? Or what could I have done differently in this relationship? Or what could have the, the other person done differently in a relationship? So I think that people fear being alone. But being alone is not a bad thing. I mean, I was single for a very long time before I got married, and I used to have date with, dates with myself. I would go out to eat by myself. I would go to the movies by myself. I would do things alone. People need to become more secure in themselves. They need to be comfortable in their own skin, and they need to learn how to be with themselves because people get into relationships because they think that this person is going to make them feel good about themselves. And you cannot go into a relationship like that because if you have low self-esteem and you hook up with somebody, that person's not going to give you high self-esteem. Right. You know what I, mean? I it's agree. Like you right. got to work on loving yourself first before you can say you're looking to attract love. And I don't believe in chasing or um, looking I believe in attracting that that's the that's the energy level that I operate on, whether it's money, um, attracting the right mate, attracting the right business, whatever it is. It's all about attracting, because when you are walking in um, a positive energy about, you know, what you're putting out into the universe, then you will attract those things. So women say, uh, you know, we're all the good men. All the good men are taking all the good men are not taking. But what are your what are you looking for? And what are your standards and what what uh, habits that are you repeating and patterns, behavior patterns that you're repeating from your last relationship? Why you can't find somebody different? You can't go to a club, expect to meet your man or your husband or you know what I mean? Go out, think outside the box, go look at other things or other ways to, you know, and you don't have to look, but I'm just saying just be approachable. Don't walk around with like, you know, an angry face all the time where men look at you, you give them the screw face, like you got to be approachable too. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? I had that problem for a very so, long time. So <laughs> I, I, my, even my boyfriend now, he's like, why do you always look like you're so mad? I'm like, that's really just my face. I was like, I'm telling you, it's just my face. And he's like, but you were so right, smiley you gotta, before. You know, you gotta be I'm like, sometimes I'm happy and you're, you're making me laugh and stuff, but just generally I'm just like, eh, whatever. Like I'm just walking around like, nothing i mean i don't know but i i get what you're saying i know people who you know walk around and say oh i can't find a good man i can't find a new man, good man and it's like you're walking around like mad at the world so or even right. men who are like i can't find a good woman you know mm -hmm. and you're still harping on like everything from past relationships i also right. agree with doing things alone because i used to go to matinees and go out to eat and go to a bar and have a drink <laughs> And it's like when you do that before you're in a relationship, like you have no fear of being alone. Like you just feel like, you know, if this doesn't work out, I'll be fine. Right. I like, don't get the point know? of going to the movies with somebody anyway. You're like, like Shh. we're not going to talk. <laughs> you're like, Shh. right. <laughs> we're not supposed to talk. I don't want to hear your questions, really. Like, I think some people are just comforted with having somebody next to next them. To them. But I, I'm, I'm all for doing things by yourself. So like you just, you just have no fear of that. Oh my God, I can never be alone again. Yeah, you'll be fine, and you know that once you've, you've done it. I do agree yeah, that exactly. it, that you have to do that. Like I don't like the whole thing is like people say, oh, you have to love yourself before you can love anyone else properly, and and it sounds very cliche, but it's very true. Like it's very true. It is very true, and I don't think. A lot of people get it until, like, you're forced into that situation. I was in a ton of, like, horrible relationships. And then, like, I did take some time by myself. And I was like, oh, one, this isn't so bad. And two, like, I don't want to have to deal with those things anymore. And, you know, you set the bar a little higher. But I don't think everyone always gets to that point. I think I agree with what you're saying in that. They have like this sense of like, oh, my God, I can't be alone. Like, what happens if I get alone? And as we get older, I think that gets more like intense because it's like crunch time like oh i'm almost 40 or, or i'm almost 45 or whatever the case may be so you know you kind of like stay in like these situations that are not so hot mm -hmm. one thing and i did 
Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say that one of the other things I think, um, which is actually one of the chapters I talk about in my book, um, game elimination, because I think a lot of people play games when they're meeting people. It's all about their representative showing up, trying to pretend they're somebody they're not, trying to make it look like they have things that they don't have. And I think that when you're more transparent and when you can like look at it like, you're going to be friends with this person and build a friendship because when you're building a friendship, there are, you know, there's certain, they're not, you're not looking at the person from that perspective where it's like, you have to have this, 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 this going down the list. You know what I mean? So become friends with the person and see if you can be friends with that person and then let the, uh, you know, relationship evolve because after that, you know, what is gone, I don't want to say it. Um, (laughs) But, you know, you got to have something to fall back on. You know what I mean? You got to have friendships. So, you know, a lot of times in relationships, you know, somebody might say, and it could be the female or the male, you know, you know, you hook up, you meet up with them and they're like, you know what, you know, you're cool and everything. Let's just hang out. But, you know, I'm not looking for anything serious. And then the the female or the male, they, they can hook up with this person and, and get intimate and think that that's going to change the person's mind. No, the person already told you, I am not looking for anything serious. So what makes you think that that's going to change their mind? Right. No, I agree with that. And that's actually what I was going to ask you. I do like the, um, that you, I read that you had a chapter about being friends first and the importance of that. Um, that's something I strongly agree with. I guess sometimes it's not as easy. You know, especially with, like, the whole new wave of dating. Like, you meet people on an app, and then you go out for coffee, or you do whatever. And then, you know, it's kind of like some people do get an opportunity to, like, build something. But other people kind of just, like, jump right into bed or jump right into whatever or jump out of whatever. But, um... (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, like I said, I think that, you know it really has to do with what you want, you know, and, you know, so a lot of people don't know what they want. And and then that's why they're in dysfunctional relationships because they go in um, with the wrong attitude. And, you know, remember earlier we talked about me saying about the type, you know, like some people might say, oh, he has to be tall, he has to be this, he has to have that, he has to be built, he has to be, you know, he has to look like he works out. You know, I mean, you have all these stipulations, but what if that person doesn't treat you right? You know right. what I mean? You have to just, like, not be so stuck on just the outside appearance. I'm not saying you want to date a hermit, but I'm just <laughs> saying that, you know, just be a little more open-minded and not, you know, have that stipulation that he has to be this way for you to go out on a date with him. Because you know what? That could be the person that treats you like a queen. You know what I mean? So don't, like, you know overlook that person and be so stuck on the physical because you know nine times out of ten you know you just focused on that that doesn't mean that that's the right person for you do you watch married at first sight or no i don't watch it but i know what show you're talking about and i thought that was kind of weird you know, doing a show like that. Like, I mean, I think they, what, they match people up or whatever based yeah, on what I, their interests I are. I guess, like, there's, like, an extensive questionnaire and they bo- everyone fills it out. They do interviews with the people. It's supposed to be somewhat, like, psychology, spiritual, and, you know, whatever based. And they match them up like that. But, like, what you're saying just reminds me of the very first season. Like, now it's pretty much, like, you know, it's a shit show. It's terrible. It's not that it's terrible. It's just that, like... I don't know that they're, like, matching people up property, properly. Um, uh-huh. But the first ep- season, in America anyway, um, uh-huh. the girl was, like, a very, like, typical, I don't know, attractive girl. And the guy who she was supposed to, or she did marry, um, mm-hmm. was kind of, like, nerdy looking. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I would necessarily look at him if he's on the street. And, like, as soon as she saw him walk up to her on the altar she was like oh oh my god no and like she literally like she said i do because obviously she's on the show and i think she was like a little bit of like you know wanted to be on the show and then um you know even after she said i do she was kind of like crying in the hallway like i don't know if i could do this (laughs) because he's like not my type and then like they take you to like where they're taking wedding photos and they're like okay get close pretend to kiss and she's like no no and she was like so completely grossed out that she was like just like (laughs) she was like in tears and like just mortified 
And like I felt bad for him a little bit because I'm like, oh, my God, this guy must be thinking like, what the heck? And like they did the whole like whatever it was, six, six week or eight week experiment. And like they were never intimate, like they'd sleep fully clothed and like didn't even sleep in the same bed for a while. And like now fast forward, I think that was like maybe three, four years ago. Um, They're still married. They had their first child together. And like she said that like she loves him like she knows that she acted ridiculous on tv but like he wasn't her type per se Physi- and like physically, physically yeah Physic- yeah because she did all <clears throat> that reacting just from the physical right yeah. but then like he was what she wanted him to be he was a family man he loved when his she mom gave him he, a chance right when mm-hmm. she opened up and she gave him a chance he was everything that she like he checked See? off all her other boxes mm-hmm. the important See? boxes not just that you know he looks good in sweatpants like i mean and sometimes right. people's physical right. Physical mm-hmm. becomes attractive once you kind of see them. their personality. Yeah. You're like, oh, maybe well, you are kind of cute. <laughs> and I, I kind of. <laughs> I, I have a personal story to share with you guys. Like, okay, so my husband, right? I knew him for, I, he used to coach my son in basketball. And I knew him for about 17 years. I want to date myself right now. But anyway, <laughs> he coached my son in basketball. And like, I didn't look at him in that light. So when our kids went away to college, we hooked up, like, we went out to dinner, and I was, like, a basketball mom, so I was, like, picking up the other kids, he was picking up my son, you know, We and we went to dinner one night, and, you know, we were just talking, you know, and I just said, I just blurted out, you know, I'm single now, you know, my son's away to college, I'm going to be dating, it just came out. (laughs) (laughs) What I happens? Mean, it's okay. <laughs> I wasn't trying to like give a signal or nothing. I was just like excited because like I had my son at a young age and I never really got to date. So it was like my son was my main vocal point. That was my focus. You know what I'm saying? So when he went away to college, it was like, wow. I'm it was like, me time. Date. You know what I mean? I never did that. You know? So I was excited about it. You know what I mean? So I was just telling the world, you know, I'm dating. I'm dating. I'm dating. So... <laughs> Then he, um, you know, well, it took him a little courage to build me. But this is my son's coach, right? So I didn't think that, you know, I didn't look at him in that light. But we started, we went out to dinner one night, and then we started hanging out. Like, I like live music, he liked live music. We had so much in common, but I never really looked at him in that light. So we started having such a great time together. Like, it was like, it was just so much fun being around this person that had so many of the interest that I have. And, you know, a lot of times I talk about, like, how somebody's married to somebody else's soulmate because you have people that's married. That doesn't necessarily mean that they were meant to be together. I mean, they could be together because of their circumstances. They had kids or whatever happened or it was convenient or it's for security or whatever the reasons were. But we had a lot in common. And I think that one of the important things is that when you are dating or when you are looking or when you are looking to attract, let's use that word, attract the right life partner, you should have some things in common that you like to do together. Like I love to travel. He loves to travel. You know what I mean? Like it should be somebody that likes to do the same things like you like to do, because now if it's not, it's kind of going to be like, a thing where you're like pulling teeth, like, you know, you want to go here and he wants to go there or you, you know, you like going out dancing and he doesn't like being around crowds. I mean, you got to figure that stuff out before you start oh, absolutely. getting serious in a relationship. Mm-hmm. No, that's, that's definitely, didn't we work with that girl who she wanted to go away and like the, her husband didn't even want to like take, go anywhere with the kids. Like she yeah. want, I think she wanted to like take the kids to Disney or something, and he was like, "Nah, I'm he doesn't do that. spend a night away from home." Yeah, that was his thing. Yeah, things no. that you should have figured out and before you said, "I she, do." And he did. She did know. Oh, she did know. Right. Yeah, we wow. had a coworker, and she, she had an ex that they traveled all the time, and she mm-hmm. that was one of her interests. And I guess she found somebody that you know. I guess I don't know if the ex wasn't ready to get married, but she found somebody that wanted to be married, but really didn't have any of the same interests as her. And right now they're still married and she's still miserable. Basically, mm-hmm. according to her Facebook posts, <laughs> <laughs> she's, still, she's still miserable because he, like you said, they're probably together for convenience or for and now right. kids, so. customs and traditions. And you know, then kids came along and now she, I don't know the case, but it feels like maybe she feels stuck. Right. Like, she I don't want right. to get divorced. She feels trapped. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get divorced. And, and, you know, and The sad thing about a situation is like, is that is that's why a lot of people cheat. 
You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's unfortunate. And of course, nobody wants to think about that. But if you're not having your needs met at home, that's what happens. People, I don't think people actually plan and say, you know what, I'm going to cheat on you today. I don't think it happens that way. You know, it, it's, it's, there's a lack of, of something in, the, in that relationship, and that person is looking for it elsewhere. So that's how it starts with, like, that particular situation you just mentioned where it's like, I want to do this, and they're like, I don't really want to do that. So now if you find somebody that's, like, around you or, you know, that, that gives you that kind of attention, it's like, you know what, yeah, let's do this. Then it becomes a thing where it's like you start to stray. So I think that... You know, when you don't have things in common or you don't, you know, lay that foundation early, the chances are that you probably will cheat. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens. And women are you always, I never heard a man get called a home wrecker. Usually the woman gets put on that label, but I already always felt like nobody can wreck your home. Like it was already kind of messed up and then. Of course. The per, I, mean, I mean, the like, person wrecked it because they should have sat down with you and told you it was wrong. But, like, it seems like the person that's outside the marriage always gets a lot of blame put on them for messing everything up. And it's almost like it probably was already messed up. And, you know, this was just the result of something that was already on its way out. Right. And and you know what? You know what? I don't even understand why people say that when they call the person that they're cheating with the homewrecker. The blame goes on the person you're with. The other person, what if the other person didn't know you was married? You know right. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you can't, people can't always just make judgment calls and say, oh, this person was a home record because you don't know what that person told this other person before this person started to get intimate or involved or whatever. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. people can't just look at it one sided. And I think that that's a cop out when people start to try to blame the other person when you need to blame the person that's, that's sleeping next to you in your bed because they know they're married. They know they have, uh, you know, they, they're they committed to you. They know they have a ring on their finger. Why aren't they blamed? You know, why aren't you calling him the homewrecker or her the homewrecker that decided to cheat? Right. It's not, you can't just blame the person on the outside. You got to look right next to you. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that whole thing with, with people making that kind of judgment on people and, 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 and putting labels on people, I, I don't think it's right because, you know, like, like you said, there were problems there and people stray and it doesn't happen overnight. You know what I mean? It's Mm -hmm. like, like you said, little things like that or a little situation where it's like, okay, I want to travel. You don't want to travel. Okay. I want to hang out tonight. I want to go dancing. I want you to take me out. We're home too much. And the person's like ignoring your needs. So if your needs are being ignored, what do you think is going to happen? Eventually it's going to (laughs) crack. You know what I mean? Right. At Mm -hmm. some point you're going to be like, you know what? Um, and then, and then you go out and you look at good one night, and then all of a sudden this person's giving you all this attention and all this affection, and like, oh, I want to take you here, I want to take you out of town, I want to take you there, and then that's what happens. That's how. That's all she wrote. <laughs> right, and that's the part about that you mentioned about finding somebody that that um that you have in common, but also finding somebody that that's good or you know is working on their communication skills. Because if you ma- exactly. if you marry or you go into a relationship with somebody who really doesn't say how they feel, who's really not into like sitting down and talking things out or, you know, being really intimate. If you get into a relationship with someone like that, they're at a higher risk for that because they're not going to sit you down and say, this is how I feel. I'm not happy with the relationship. I'm bored. Uh, you know, these are the problems. What can we do about it? Like if you marry somebody that, I mean, you know, definitely marry somebody that you know for sure was horrible at communication and has done nothing to fix it, you're kind of setting yourself up for someone being at a higher risk of just kind of straying away because they don't want to sit with you and talk about what's going on. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And, you know, another thing, like you said, you know, if you see that you're with somebody and, and they're, and, you know, they're pissed off at you and they're giving you the silent treatment and y'all in the same house and they don't want to talk to you and they're like walking by you, like, that's a red flag. You don't want to mm-hmm. marry that person. Right. <laughs> at least because... until go figure out, go get some help or work on it or do something. Like sometimes exactly. people just need like some time before they get married, time to work out, work things out before. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. Look at all the signals. Like you said, Mm -hmm. it's so important to look at all of those signals. Like, and you know what happens too with, you know, I believe that a lot of who we are, um, is, is, is formed and developed from our childhood experiences and, you know, our cultures Mm -hmm. and how we were raised and how we look at, you know, even our own parents, you know what I mean? So I think that all of those different pieces and, you know, it, 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 it formulates the dynamic of the person and how they react and how they respond to certain situations. You know what I mean? No, and absolutely. Like you said, you have to know is this somebody, you know, is this somebody I want to be married to that doesn't talk to me for a whole week and walks right by me in the house? Is this somebody that, you know, like that gets so, you know, cold? You know, that's another thing to look for. Is this person cold? You know, like how does this person treat their mom? How does this person treat their children? How does this person treat the people that are close to them? These are all signals for people to look at when they get in a relationship. Mm-hmm, definitely. You can definitely tell a lot by how they are with their family and stuff like that. The first time you go to meet the parents or whatever, you know, you can kind of see the dynamics and you're like, hmm. Yeah. I don't know if this that. is going to last. <laughs> Or maybe you're like, you know what? I love the way they are with their family. Like, this is a good, this is a good look. But some people, right. some people like will go and see what's going on and then just be like, oh, his mom was being like, whatever. So he, she deserved to be spoken to like that. Like, what? That's his mom. No. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not okay. I feel like exactly. sometimes, I'm, I'm sure men do it too. I would, right. But I feel like a lot of times women like will make excuses for men just because it's easier to do that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like if you see like this person, the way he's talking about his ex, because like even like if a man has a child with a woman and they're not with them, they should still still respect that. woman. Absolutely. Regardless if they're not together or whatever the situation is. But that is the mother of their child. And if you see that this man is like calling this woman a B word and he's like talking so bad about her and he like you know this is a red flag like you know this could be you <laughs> they give you the oh she was crazy like was she really because <laughs> or did you or did you make she was normal and you made her crazy <laughs> exactly you know you gotta pay attention to all of those things like even how he treats his ex you know especially if they have kids with the person you know yeah that's definitely important Cause like yeah. it doesn't matter what you think of that person, that's still the mother of your child. So, I actually remember the coworker I told you about. I actually have somebody works at my job, and he's constantly, constantly bad mouths his son's mother. And there was another young lady there who I guess he was kind of trying to kick it to her, and she was like, you know, do, what do you think I should do? I said, I think you should run, keep walking, because he <laughs> talks horribly. <laughs> horribly about his son's mother and one day i couldn't take it anymore i'm like but you chose her you chose her and you laid down with her and you had a baby with her and you're saying she's a horrible mother but she had two children when you met her so you should have known that before you got her pregnant because she was a mother already so you had more than enough proof if she was such a horrible mother you had more than enough proof that you could have walked away yeah. With what you saw already, and you stayed and and made more babies, right? And I'm and I said to her, if he talks about that woman like that who had his child, he any little thing you do is not going to be good enough. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And you know what kills me though, ladies, when the man said she trapped me, she trapped me, <laughs> she mm-hmm. trapped. Oh, she she made you, she tied you down, she put cuffs on you. And made you have sex with her. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that anybody, it, it you don't have to be old to know nothing's a hundred percent except celibacy. Exactly. Anything else, a baby can come about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. when people say like, "Oh, I didn't mean for it to well, get she pregnant," she trapped me. She she did right. this to me. No, why was you there? You you participated. You yep. was a participant. You was a willing participant. A woman can't trap you if you're a willing participant. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Especially, it doesn't matter what kind of birth control somebody's on. It's not 100%. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. You know, it, you know, the thing is, too, that, you know, I think that 
you know, with men, like women, when it comes to like women attracting the right men, I think that women have to first know what they want, you know, and if right. you are used to being in dysfunctional relationships, how do you identify with what's a healthy relationship? You know what I mean? It's like you're going to keep repeating the same patterns from your past because you never really met that right guy or that right female that actually treated you the way you deserve to be treated. Because sometimes I hear stories or situations with women. I'm thinking like, I would, I wouldn't even get past the second date. Like I wouldn't get, like I would never tolerate that. You know what I mean? Like you know, like you would never even allow that to happen. But why is it that some people do? And I think that the reason that some people do is because. You know, they have to value their self-worth to know that, listen, I deserve better. I deserve to be treated better. I'm valuable. I'm worthy. You know, and if you don't see that for yourself, then you're going to keep attracting this this, this dysfunctional behavior. So what would you tell to the woman who has been through enough bad relationships and now is like, I want to find the right man. How do I start? I would tell them to start with changing their language instead of find and attract. Don't find, Mm -hmm. don't look, don't search, don't chase. I would say that spend time with themselves. Get to know themselves. Get to love themselves. Get to know what makes them happy. And it shouldn't just be being in a relationship that makes a person happy. But finding out what are your joys what are things that make you give you that that zest for life give you that you know because when you meet someone or when you attract the right person it's just going to add to that you want someone that's going to compliment you you don't want someone that's going to make you feel like you're they're filling that void in your life because if they're filling a void and then they move out of your life then how will you survive you need to figure out how to find your own happiness as an individual person and then once you do that and work on you you know one of the things i talk about in the book is is like we we discussed earlier self-love it's it's so important it's so important and not only in relationships but every other area of your life because when you have self-love certain things you just will not tolerate you will not tolerate foolishness you will not tolerate negativity you will not tolerate abusive uh behavior or disrespect you won't tolerate that so it's finding your value in yourself and building your own self-worth when you build your own self-worth, then you're in a better position to attract the person that's right for you. And I always say, don't go after somebody you want. Go for somebody that would be good for you. Because what you want is not always what you need. And a lot of times people are like, oh, I want this. I want him to be this. I want him to be that. But that might not be good for you. So let that go. Let that old mindset go let that old behavior pattern go and start new and first work on yourself i I mean i think that anybody that's looking to be in a a healthy relationship has to work on themselves first i agree i agree well this is all very very informative so georgia what else do you have going on right now where can people find you um what's you, I know you have this book and you have other books um, that are born business minded, which are also very important. Um, can you tell us yes. like where to find all that and what you have going on now and stuff? Sure. Uh, how much time I have? You, <laughs> you can give me like a five minute synopsis. Okay, five minutes. Okay. But well, let me just go through real quick the do's and don'ts to attracting the right man. All right. And I'm going all right. Then go ahead. Go for it. Okay. So the do's and don'ts to attracting the right man. The do's. I'm talking about the do's, ladies. So the do's. Do be yourself at all times. Do keep a positive attitude and outlook about relationships. Do have confidence in yourself. Do continue to be responsible and independent. Independence, ladies. Do stay focused on what you want in your life and what will make you happy. Do keep your body healthy. Do smile and be approachable. Do pay attention to every word that comes out of his mouth. Do look into his eyes when you are speaking to him. Uh, Do learn... To how to be friends first and enjoy his company. Do 
be upfront about where you are in life and what you want and do spend time alone to reevaluate and evaluate in between relationships. Okay, and these are the don'ts. I love that. Go ahead. Okay, here are some of the don'ts. Don't tell him how you feel about him too soon. Let things take time. Mm. Don't give up the cookies too fast. Don't compare the old guy with the new guy. Don't allow yourself to be available for a booty call. (laughs) Don't prejudge every guy you meet based on his looks. Don't whine and complain to him. Don't be clingy or appear to be jealous. Don't chase a man. Let him do the chasing. Don't allow a man to have control over your decisions. Don't make excuses for a man's behavior. Don't settle for less than the best. Don't let a man define who you are. Don't conform to please a man. And last but not least, don't allow a man to verbally, mentally, or physically abuse you. Absolutely. So there are the do's and don'ts. Okay. So I love it. I, I think those are <laughs> very. Yeah. Um, it's like so it's like one of those like a Saturday afternoon commercials. Like the more you know. Because I do a lot of speaking engagements, and people like when I go and motivate people and get people all gung ho and hoorah, I always wonder like. Do they implement these things that I talk about in my in my talks? You know what I mean? So now I have a platform to do that in this master class. It's entitled How to Turn Your Passion into Profits. I think that this is such a perfect time for this class because I think people are searching right now, um, especially like where we are as a society. I think people are looking or they're looking to find their purpose. They're looking to find more fulfillment. And in this class... I'm going to be teaching how to unlock your gifts and talents and skills to impact others. I'm going to be teaching simple strategies to gain focus and clarity so you can create your desired outcome. Um, So I'm going to be teaching about meditation. I'm going to be teaching about affirmations, vision boards, all the things to create and manifest your current reality. I'm going to be also teaching about strategic planning principles to accelerate your learning curve so that you can achieve your personal professional goals. And I'm going to be teaching effective ways to build your brand and attract your tribe and turn your passions into profits and so 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 much more so how to turn your passions into profits to create the life you want i'm doing a live free webinar on october 25th at 7 p.m eastern standard time people can go to my facebook go to georgia woodbine on my facebook georgia woodbine on instagram They can Google me. They can go to my website. It's www.georgiawoodbine.com. Make sure that you go to my info page because when you go to my info page, you can subscribe to my emails. So I encourage people to make it to that webinar because I guarantee you when they hear what I have to say, they will not be the same again. I don't think I'm going to sign up. I'm going to share it on our Facebook page as well. Um, so that our listeners can get it. And <laughs> I just got sorted by a child. Um, I would, I'm going to share it on the Facebook page so that, you know, our listeners can get it as well as, you know, people who are listening today and people yeah, who may not have listened to it, but I will send you guys okay. a link by email because people have to register for the class. So, I mean, for the webinar. So I'll is it like, limi- the is it limited space? Your website. Is it limited space? Yeah, there is limited seating, okay. so that's why I encourage people to sign up as soon as possible. Okay, cool. But I'll send you guys. I'll send you guys the link. Um, okay. And I'll send you the photo with the link. Um, I don't know if I should inbox it to your Facebook or if I should send it by email. You let me e- know. What's either way, Facebook. email's fine, and then we can just put it all on Facebook. It's fine. Okay. Either way. Awesome. So yeah, so I'm super excited about this master class. Um. You know, I feel like this is going to change a lot of lives. And one of the things that I talk about is my mission statement for my life. And my mission statement is to encourage, to empower, and to motivate one million plus people. And that's what I'm going to be doing with this master class. Nice. That's definitely, definitely what's up. And you have like the, you have like uh, the personality and the voice and stuff like that. I mean. I feel like you could do this. I mean, I'm already like a little enlightened, so <laughs> sign me up. You know, I've been doing this for a minute, ladies. I've been doing this for a minute. 
ladies. I mean, I know I sound young, but uh, <laughs> I've been doing this. I've been doing this since 2005. I've been in doing this for like doing the life coaching and doing the public speaking and, um, you know, writing books for 13 years now. So I've, oh, I've nice. been doing this for a minute. And you know what I mean? I have a lot of um, things that I've learned along the way. And that's why I want to show other people. I want to help to accelerate their learning curve. You know what I mean? Like, I think people, a lot of times people spend their energy, they spend time, they spend money, they spend wasted energies on things that they should not be focused on to reach their goals. And that's what I'm going to help people do. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I thank you for joining us today. And we're going to put for having me. We're going to put all your information up on our site so our our listeners know where to find you. And um if there's anything ever else that you uh want to come and share with us, definitely inbox us and let us know and we'll love to have you. Thank you guys. Thank you ladies for having me. Thank you. Thank you for interview. coming. All right, take care, Georgia. All right, take care. Bye-bye. 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 Cool. That was fun. Nice, yeah. she I had like a, her. I like her too. She had a lot of good points. Mm-hmm. And she seemed like she kind of, you know, um, she went, you know, she said she was a single for a long time. I'm assuming maybe she went on dates here and there, but I guess it's kind of like, right. you know, she. Well, she had a kid, so she said like her kid was her focus. And, right. So it seemed know. like she, maybe from her experiences too, like she, she knows what she kind of experienced, what she's saying. Right. So, yeah. So that was good. It was enlightening. That was awesome. Yep. I hope you guys liked it. Um, anything new going on, April? Um, same old, same old. Not much new. Um, there's a new blog I'm administrating. It's called um, Truth Complex. Nice. So all my original articles from Miss April Speaks are still there. So you can still, if you go on WordPress, is, um, search for Truth Complex. Um, it's actually a truthcomplex.wordpress.com. I think the, I shared it on Facebook, and if not, we'll do it again. Oh, okay, yeah, the blog is Truth Complex. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to something a little more unique when in, in, for search engines and things like that and names. So are you just April now, or are you still Miss April Speaks? I'm still Miss April Speaks, just, <laughs> <laughs> just not for the blog having an identity necessarily. Crisis? Like, maybe for my page, but the blog, I just wanted it to be kind of have its own i hate to say identity but <laughs> i just wanted it to have i didn't want it to have anybody's name on it i right. just wanted it to have its be its own thing its own entity separate yeah. from right and i wanted yeah yeah yeah. i get that yeah so that's why one sunday i was just sitting there like huh when i went to post, i know i was like wait this is letter. april's article and who is this i was like oh did she get picked up by a blog i was like like, damn that was quick i was like but she went in on that article though but and that's kind of the thing i want people to kind of look at it and like because i feel like too like like i want my blog to be for everybody right and i feel like if certain people see miss april speaks they're like oh she's just talking about women's women's stuff yeah I got or she's this is just some woman talking about love or something but maybe if they see truth complex, it's like it could be a variety of things. Right. It could be any. It could be man, woman. It could be anybody. It, it, it's just a little more anonymous. Right. So I don't want people to just look at it and think this is, you know, like certain articles are probably going to be targeted to certain people, like or for women or for men or whatever the case is. But like, I just wanted people to see it and click on it, thinking maybe it's something here for me, not just see it and like, oh no, she's not going to be talking about anything. I. Did you see the season finale of Insecure? Just thinking about it. Wait a minute. (laughs) I didn't see. Did I see it Sunday? That was the season finale? Yeah, it's over. It's done. (laughs) Wait a minute. What happened? A little bit. Um, It was her birthday. It was Issa's birthday. Yes. I saw it. That's the season finale? (laughs) What? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. It's how many episodes has it been? Like eight, I think. That's it. Six or eight, something really? like that. Really? Yeah, it's not like I saw six, that when they they, they watched Last Dragon. Yeah, first of all, I was like, when do they have these events, and can we go? And why are y'all in a cemetery? Yeah, I ain't yeah. going to the cemetery. I know it's the living that can hurt you, not the dead. But I'm still not going. <laughs> <laughs> that's what my grandmother always said when you're like oh my god a cemetery my grandma's like it's the living that can kill you not the dead <laughs> you're like okay then <laughs> still ain't going right but i'm like they was chilling in that graveyard i'm like mm, i don't know Lord, it Lord, was a nice cemetery anyway Lord, to smile warms my heart 
I like Lawrence. I think, I don't know. I don't think you could, I don't think it sh- should always be considered going backwards per se, but I don't know. I don't think that that's that bad of a thing if they get back together. No. I don't think it's bad. I, I, I mean. <clears throat> but kind of like what Georgia was saying, like they were together a long time and they clearly like built a friendship. So like mm-hmm. when they were able to get together, like, like that's her safety. You can like, see the little remnants of the yeah, friendship, but the right. things they had in common. Right. And he was like quoting her. They were doing last dragon quotes back mm-hmm, and forth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was like, oh, that's not like you, Issa, or, you know, like, and that's the stuff that kind of. And then the he brought her stuff. her favorite candy. Yeah. You know, and he realized. Oh, my and heart. It, it's just like, <laughs> unfortunately, and I don't think this is a reason for anybody to stay in a relationship that sucks, but it's hard to find that with people right that thing you have where you know the movie lines and right the person re- actually remembers what you tell them like, right or and, and like you could just get together and not see each other for a minute and just to just hit it right off like right. you never <laughs> left like you just even with like platonic friends even two women two men like you don't connect with everybody no even, totally even just as regular friends like even just meeting somebody like I am not friends with uh, I mean one person from work except you. <laughs> like I'm like I don't care for none of y'all except one except except a- H whatever H B. Mm-hmm. She was H whatever now she's H B. Okay, but <laughs> I forgot her maiden name, but she's H B now. But and her, but like other than you guys, other than the two of you, three of you, I mean. Like, I, I would never go to work and connect with everybody right, at a workplace. Right. I'm like, I don't like none of y'all, like, outside of here. So it's like, you don't, even if for platonic friends, you don't connect with anybody. So it's hard. And I don't blame Misa if she tries to make it work again Do with Do you Lawrence. think she should uh, forgive Nathan for ghosting her and then coming back and just saying, I had some shit going on? And I think she should forgive him. I also think she should slow down with him. Yeah, I think I think that should slow her down. I don't think she should necessarily um, never stop speaking to him. Right. But I mean, for me, and maybe that's a little more emo- um, higher. My emotional IQ needs to go. I would need a bit more of what the hell happened. Right. Like you were going through some things back in Houston. And can I have a little snippet? <laughs> because but I also feel like on the other hand, I feel like she didn't know him long enough to be that mad. Right. He's basically a stranger to you. Like, and are you that heartbroken? That's something you need to deal with. My with boyfriend you. was like, didn't he tell her that that's his that's his M.O. that he just like leaves places when things get crazy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm glad you picked up on that. because <laughs> Right. I was just looking at his eyes. And right. <laughs> but I feel like, too, I feel like if you're that broken with somebody you've known for like two, three weeks ghosts you. Like, that's something you need to work on with you. I think it that's was the fact on. that, like, that was the first time she felt anything real after Lawrence. and Still not his fault. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, that's something she got to come to terms with. Like, what's going on with you? What if somebody, there's people that have been with people for eight months and get she ghosted. She was stigmatized. <laughs> right. People be with somebody six months, dating somebody for three, four, five months and get ghosted. And they're not as crazy as you're going right now. So... I mean, if you if you if that little three weeks was the best three weeks you've had since I didn't Lawrence, see the episode when we talked about it last week and then I watched it like after you left and I was like damn yo she's really she's really messed up mm-hmm, mm-hmm. she's really feeling it and it's like maybe you need to go back to Lawrence then if you're still that messed up like she said oh I think I'm finally over him I don't think you are like y'all still awkward why are you still awkward like if you're really over somebody you would be a lot more relaxed I feel like yeah but, so all right, That's well, that stuff. Uh, super fam Sam emailed me today and said that she'd like to come on with her boyfriend. They just, uh, they've been cohabitating now for a couple months. They're oh, in a okay. long distance relationship and they wanted to come on and play the end. I'm not sure how they're going to do it. I guess we're going to have to read them the questions. So we're going to uh, have to find a time for them to come on. Can we? We don't want to send them the questions because then they could already form an answer that's not. Right. It's okay. supposed to be like a surprise. Okay. So we might just have to read the question like for them. Can we, uh, and they're gonna come on via Skype? Yeah, or maybe we can okay. show them the question. Cause Skype can be video, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was just confused about this whole thing. No, I, I didn't really want to sit there and like 
you know face yeah okay. I'm, in, I'm in my gym clothes i'm just like not no press please or, or so we can ask them the question yeah we can okay. ask them either way okay that would be great that'd be fun so we have to find like a saturday okay. since they're like six hours ahead of us it's like toddlers are awesome i just want one that age <laughs> he's having his own little like imaginary like playtime here we sorry y'all for the noise and sometimes they gotta come sometimes it's just it's yeah, but they they King Kai it, is awesome. He can come wherever he wants. <laughs> they intrude. I was kind of so I felt kind of bad. Georgia felt a little censored. I don't like to censor people. I like people to go ahead and say what they got to say. So I felt a little bad. She she had to censor herself. But and he is in the repeating stage. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm like shit. Yeah. <laughs> All well, right. We thank y'all for being patient with us. All right, so till next week. Sit down. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> that was King Kai signing out. All right, peace. Peace.